more than you ever cared to know. I actually feel pretty good about that answer. I've won a common law trademark game. Okay? It was actually kind of fun. So a trademark protects against anyone else using what are considered confusingly similar marks, services, or words. It helps to keep from diluting your own brand by making sure that whatever marks you use for your business, nobody else can counterfeit them or use confusingly similar ones such that any products you have would be confused for theirs or vice versa. A registered trademark is simply the registration of that mark with the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office, USPTO. And that is to put anyone on notice that you have ownership rights over that distinctive mark. So a trademark and a registered trademark are generally the same thing. A registered trademark is given more protection because the general public has been put on notice that you have ownership rights of that mark. There are things known as common law trademark, which just means if you've got a mark or a service that you put into commerce, so you sell something, that can give you some limited common law trademark rights. However, those rights are generally limited only to the areas uh, that you sell those goods. A registered trademark, one that you've registered with the US Patent and Trademark Office, gives you rights throughout the United States. So the process to trademark something is relatively complicated. You have to apply and file an application for whatever you want. For instance, if you've got a name of a particular candle or a business that you want to trademark, you would file a word mark with the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office, USPTO.gov. And as part of that, you'd have to include the classes for which you want to use that particular mark. If there are anything, any confusingly similar marks in the same or similar classes, it would then get reviewed by a reviewer at the USPTO and they would come back to you either granting you the trademark or with some distinctions making you change the application. It's also possible they could deny it as well. It's a significantly confusing process. It can be done by a layperson, but I would highly recommend that you hire a, a specialized attorney to file those because they can give you the idea of what may be some potential pitfalls of your specific mark, logo, and specifically the classes for which you are applying for such protection. Classes are exactly a category, they just call them classes. If you wanted to trademark a particular scent or fragrance oil or something like that, that would be considered a class three good. Even a registered trademark is only protection for those specific classes of good. You want to be specific with which class you choose because if you choose the wrong class of marks for protection, then either you may be infringing on someone else who has the correct classification in their trademark, or you won't be getting the correct protections for your own mark, which is why it's useful to have an attorney who has seen those and can tell which classes your particular products or industries belong to and make sure that that is appropriately done on the application as well. It costs several hundred up to a couple thousand dollars to file each application as well. So it would be difficult to do for uh, you know, each individual candle, it might be something you would want to do for a particular line of candles. I think for most of our customers, the, the expense of trademarking something is likely a barrier. They may not get the protections necessary for the costs that it will take them to get that protection. If you're selling at local markets, the, you know, Oyster Fest at Ocean Isle Beach, you know, for the most part, you're gonna have common law protection so that anybody in your sphere of influence can't steal from you. But somebody selling candles in North Dakota that isn't necessarily gonna take customers from you would be able to have similar names. Now, where that gets a lot more interesting is if you're selling candles online, because then the argument is that your common law reaches wherever your clients are. So if you've sold a candle in North Dakota before somebody in North Dakota takes your name, then you've got common law rights against them as well. But if you've registered that name, then regardless if you've never sold a candle into North Dakota or Wyoming or Florida or California, 
If you've got a registered trademark, that protection is there because it ex registering your trademark expands your area of influence to the entire United States. And it puts the entire United States on notice that you own that specific mark. That's positive and negative because again, for you know most of our customers, I don't know that it makes a lot of sense to pay $1,000 to trademark every single candle name they have, especially if those names are, you know, tobacco or, you know, orange or descriptive, because again, they may not be able to get the trademark for it. If you want to look up potential names, uh, your best friend is going to be the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office, USPTO.gov. There's basic word mark searches, which is where I would tell anyone to start. You type it in, you can use different connectors to see. It will tell you what marks are uh, have been registered, whether they are alive or dead, and specifically what classes are for specific marks. There's also logo marks where you can upload logos and stuff like that, but honestly, the best place to start is the basic word mark search. Being able to look up what registered trademarks are out there is useful for our customers to make sure they're not infringing on anything. You know, Disney characters. Some of those things that folks may want to start to name candles after likely have a lot of trademark protections because Disney has candles of their own. They have applied and Disney is sort of notorious for having strong trademark protections. They've been building them for over a hundred years now. And so they make sure that they've got classifications for almost everything. And so you've got to be careful and can find those trademarks on the USPTO.gov website. But that, again, it may not make sense for you to trademark Mickey's candles. One, because I suspect Disney already has it. Two, you want to make sure that you are differentiating yourself and wouldn't be able to use that even if they had. So generally what you think of for copyright is something that has been written. You write music, you write a play, or you write a movie or a script to a movie, those sorts of things are given copyright. Trademarks are generally more for stuff in business, in trade. You can have a trademark or a service mark. And so that's sort of the difference between the two. And again, copyrights are easier because once it's been published and published can mean on a website, you then have some limited amount of copyright protection. But again, copyright protections generally are not as strong as trademark protection. So you could copyright some of the descriptions of your candles. If you want to protect your line of candles, a trademark is going to give you more protection than a copyright. We generally encourage our customers to create their own fragrance names, their own products, because that will help differentiate them as opposed to taking our names and using it for candles. Because again, there's an argument that if they were to take ours and use it, they wouldn't get any ownership interest. It would just help us. It makes more sense for them to create their own line, use their own and differentiate that way their own sphere. They can tell when it started. They're the ones who come up with it creatively and they can then control the sphere of where it is used and what protection they would get, even if it's just common law protection. Infringement is essentially whether another mark's use is likely to cause confusion, mistake, or deception in the minds of relevant customers. You're trying to make sure that customers of yours who might be a customer of a competitor would not be confused, but not necessarily that you get to keep customers of all other businesses from using that similar mark. So if you remember coming to America, they had McDonald's, and then McDougal's. McDonald's had the golden arches. McDougal's had the golden arcs. And again, that's counterfeiting because it's close enough that, that it would cause customers looking for a McDonald's to then divert to McDougal's in that particular case. Knock off handbags and shirts, knock off stuff like that would be considered counterfeiting. And again, would be an infringing activity on a registered trademark. It would also be infringing activity on a common law trademark, provided it's still in your sphere of influence. So again, somebody doing it in North Dakota likely is not infringing on an unregistered mark in North Carolina, but it would be if it's a registered trademark. If you've got a trademark for a certain use that you can use that to help make sure that there are no confusingly similar domain names that then um, take traffic away from your site and to a competitor, 
So that's one of the ways that having a trademark could be useful. It also could be considered infringement by having essentially diverting traffic where, where customers of yours are intending to find your company candles, etc., but are somehow diverted away because of a misspelling or something else that then sends folks to a competitor. That would be considered infringing activity as well. You can, if you're doing promotions, advertising, replacement parts, product reviews and reporting, that's considered fair use where you can actually use someone else's trademark for your own. But the reason why those are very specifically limited, again, think about reporting, think about product reviews. They have to be able to mention a protected name product entity in providing a service like reporting or providing reviews. And so fair use will give some limited protection to any infringing activity. Comedy is a, one of those as well. Satire, generally considered fair use. So you've got to be a little bit careful, but there could be ways where so long as someone doesn't take it seriously as you trying to stand in for whatever that entity is, then it would not be considered infringement. And that's part of the fair use doctrine. SNL is the perfect example. Like nobody thinks when they do commercials, nobody thinks it's real. And so long as, again, a relevant consumer would not be confused, then it cannot be trademark infringement. And so that's why fair use is a defense to that because it's either not confusingly similar or a relevant consumer would not believe it to be confusingly similar. So the question is, could you name your candle after a Taylor Swift song, songs in general, you know, city, stuff like that? The answer is, it depends. Is there trademark protection specific to the class that you can find? And again, don't, don't rely on Facebook, don't rely on Instagram. The place where those trademarks exist is at USPTO.gov. So do the search there, look for the specific classes. Again, you may be able to, if you have differentiated it at all, uh, if you if you make sure that there isn't a specific trademark for that specific class, then it would be an homage, but it wouldn't be something confusingly similar to similar consumers. Where you would want to be careful is that you are not representing in any way that these are Taylor Swift's candles, unless Taylor Swift has specifically said they are or has endorsed them. So you've got to be careful there too, that you are not implying an endorsement by using those songs. So again, that's where parody, turn a phrase, or a pun on something like that could be useful to differentiate your product and not try and sort of um, intimate that there is an endorsement there that you may not have. So something falls into the public domain when any copyright or trademark protections against it, generally works of literature, most often fall into the public domain. There are no more ownership rights such that it is free use for anyone in the general public, us public domain, which means you can then, you can use the specific names, entities, uh, make associations with, without fearing any trademark infringement activity. However, if you're using items in the public domain, you yourself would then not be entitled to those same protections because again, you're using something that the general public can always use. I love the idea of like an era's tour where each candle is named after the city that they're in. That makes sense. I feel like we got there at the end, right?